The latest rate to cut its dividend is CD Office Street. It just announced that it would cut its dividend in half and this came as a surprise to many investors because this is actually one of the best performing office rates. Most of its properties are in strong and rapidly growing Sunbelt markets and its same property NOI growth is even positive. In the last quarter it grew by 3% and the management even sounded quite optimistic on their conference call but despite that they still decided to cut their dividend to preserve liquidity and I think that this is quite worrying for the office REIT sector because if you now even have the stronger REITs cut their dividend what does this mean? for the rest of the sector. The reality is that office rates are today really facing a perfect storm. People are still working from home, we are approaching a recession, interest rates are up very significantly, leverage is quite high in the office sector, now it's also getting harder to refinance your properties and then finally as leases gradually expire, tenants have a lot of bargaining power now because they know that there's a lot of vacant space elsewhere so they're making very significant requests for their landlords to improve the properties and this is happening at a time when these REITs have limited access to capital and so it's forcing them to cut their dividend. This has led many of you to ask me what REITs are the next in line to cut their dividend. Hey everyone, this is Yossi. I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I want to highlight to you five REITs that I expect to cut their dividend in the near term. But before I get into it, if you could please make me a huge favor and like this video, it will help me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you very much. So the first office REIT that I expect to cut its dividend is called SL Green. Its ticker symbol is SLG. This is a REIT that's heavily discussed these days on different investment forums like Seeking Alpha because it's very heavily discounted relative to to its net asset value, it owns class A properties mostly in New York. I'm myself quite bullish on the long-term prospects of this REIT. I think that it's quite severely discounted today, but this doesn't change the fact that it's likely gonna have to cut its dividend. Its closest peer, Vornado Realty Trust, just recently announced that it would fully suspend its dividend in an effort to preserve liquidity. And look, today the payout ratio of SL Green is quite reasonable at 60%, but I still expect it to follow the same path as Vornado because the market really isn't giving it any credit for paying this dividend and so it may as well just eliminate it and preserve liquidity and pay off debt. I think that the main concern of the market here is the financial health of the company. It's worrying that it's going to have difficulties refinancing its debt and potentially even push the company into bankruptcy. With that in mind, I think that the best thing that the REIT could do today is to eliminate the dividend, preserve liquidity, because this would really address these concerns. And at the same time, it would also give the REIT more flexibility because today it's attempting to sell some assets to raise capital, it would give it more time and more bargaining power with the property buyers. Then the second read I expect to cut its dividend is called Alexander's. This is also a read that owns office buildings mainly in New York, but I think that the cut here is even likelier because its payout ratio is today over 100%. The dividend is clearly not sustainable, but it seems to me that the reason why it hasn't yet cut its dividend is because the company's biggest shareholder is another read called Vornado Realty Trust and they probably pushed Alexander to keep paying the dividend because they wanted to get the income it helped their income statement but now that Vornado has itself also fully suspended its dividend I think it's quite likely that Alexander is going to follow the same path. Then the third rate is global net lease. I've discussed this one quite a few times on this channel in the past. It's a net lease rate that owns all types of properties but still to this day about 50% of its cash flow is coming from single tenant office buildings and I'm especially pessimistic about the long-term outlook of these properties because because I know that if a tenant vacates, it can be very difficult to refill. It can require a lot of capex. I'm uh, talking from my previous private equity background. I know that these properties can become very problematic very quickly once you approach the end of your lease term. And today, Global Net Lease is still doing fairly well because it has many years left on the leases. Most of its tenants are investment grade rated. But I think that as we approach the end of the leases, the tenants are going to start negotiating very significant tenant improvements, uh, capex from the the landlord to keep the properties desirable to them and in the worst case scenario they may even move away uh, requesting global net lease then to divide the property into multi-tenant buildings which is going to cost it a lot of capex and for this reason I think that the dividend is not going to be sustainable the payout ratio is today already near 100% and this is a read that also has a track record of cutting its dividend in the past I think that we'll see one more later this year. Then the fourth read is Easterly Government Properties, ticker symbol DEA. This is the 
worried that I'm the least sure about. It might be able to pull it off and maintain its dividend. There are many things that I like about this REIT. I think it's well managed. I like the unique strategy of focusing on properties that are leased to government agencies. But I still think that the risk of a cut is significant here because despite leasing these properties to government agencies, they still remain uh, office buildings for the most part. And something that the market appears to ignore here is that government agencies really hold a lot of bargaining power at the time of the lease renewal because they know really well that the last thing that the landlord would want is that the government agency moves away because in that case it would cost them a lot of capex to adapt that property to a corporate tenant again because these government properties typically have some unique features that really are made for the government and then on top of that once it releases the property to another company the issue is that the property will probably trade at a much higher cap rate reducing the value of the building and so knowing that the government is going to hold a lot of bargaining power at the time of the lease renewals I fear that it's going to ask for very significant tenant improvements in a best case scenario and then in a worst case scenario it may even just decide to vacate and you know even today there are still a lot of government workers who, who are staying remote perhaps they don't need as much office space anymore and in that case they may consider just uh, consolidating the, the offices from two to three buildings into just one modern new building and that could be a big issue for the street today with a payout ratio of about 90 percent I think the risk of a dividend cut is really high and then the fifth and final read that I want to discuss here is called Brandywine Realty Trust this is one of the few office reads that hasn't cut its dividend yet its dividend yield is today over 20 percent so clearly the market is expecting a dividend cut and I think it's right the reason why it hasn't cut its dividend yet is because it owns some properties in Austin which is a market that's performed really well in recent years and then on top of that it also owns some life science buildings that are still enjoying growing rents today but the issue is that the majority of its portfolio is still invested in office buildings most of its office buildings are also in Philadelphia which is a market that's not doing really well today then the REIT also has quite a bit of leverage and its payout ratio is high at nearly 90% which makes the risk of a cut very significant. So these are five REITs that I expect to cut their dividend in the near term. Now if you want to learn more about what REITs I'm buying at the moment feel free to join my sub stack. It's completely free. I just created it the other day. I'll put a link somewhere in the description of this video. There you'll find the latest news affecting the REIT sector and much more. I expect to start publishing content in a, in a couple of weeks. Otherwise again if you could please like the video if you find this content valuable that will help me a lot. Thank you very much and see you at my next one. Bye-bye.